Hey, how y'all doing, everybody? Praise the Lord. Hope y'all are having a good week so far. I just want to uh, talk about some things that the Lord has been just dealing with me with personally. You know, just regarding everything that's going on around us right now. The Lord is moving by his spirit, by leaps and bounds. All we have to do is just stay in the spirit of the Lord so that we could be able to see the manifestation. And right now we are in a warfare right now, a spiritual warfare. But, you know, the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God and the pulling down of strongholds. So we have to continue to stay in the spirit of the Lord so that we can win the battle. Um, I want to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you on tonight. We thank you for what you're going to do. How are you going to speak to us tonight? You said that it is pleasures forevermore. You said that the blessings of the Lord make it thee rich and you addeth no sorrow to it. Give us all the strength to hold on to what it is that you want us to do because you know the end from the beginning. And we just ask you, you know all things, Lord. You know everything. You know we can see down the corner. But you can see around the corner, Lord. And just give us the strength to be able for us to be able to hold on to what you promised us so that we can be what it is that you called us to be on earth. We rebuke and we destroy and we burn down every demonic altar, every satanic altar, every religious altar with the fire of Jesus Christ right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, to do these things in Jesus' name. So basically, hey, how you doing, sis? Um, I was looking at something on YouTube last week because I was feeling a little defeated about something last week. And I went on the YouTube and I saw this video, this sister she had, it was like maybe a, a minute and... 20 seconds or something. And she said that, she said, don't allow the enemy to shake your faith because it, it because it, it, it distracts what the Lord is doing for us. So the Lord has given us power over the enemy. We just, we, we go through things because he's trying to teach us how to use it. Earlier today, I was coming home from work. The Lord just started dealing with me because I've been going through a warfare, just like all of us are right now. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Eric, he said, I'm allowing the enemy to warfare against you so that you can come to me more. He said, because the more that you come to me, the more I will empower you, comfort you, reveal things to you. And he said, the only thing you have to do is not allow what the enemy is trying to plant in your mind to manifest. He said, you have to fight because he said that Satan is a liar. He's the father of lies. You see what I'm saying? So we have to learn how to uh, fight against what Satan tries to plant in our minds because he tries to mess with our minds. But the Lord was just showing me, I allow the enemy to fight you so that you can come to me more and more and more. Because that's why it says, in the, and I think it's in the book of Titus, where it says, build up your most holy faith, praying in the spirit. So it's just all designed to build up our faith in him. Hey, how you doing, Mark? It's just all designed to build up our faith in him. And whatever Satan says is a lie. 
because things are getting ready to manifest for us, brothers and sisters. So right now, we're just going through a warfare right now. That's all. So um, I just wanted to go. Let's see here. I was reading. I believe I was reading. Um, what was I reading? Second Peter. Second Peter chapter one, uh, verse three. It says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. So the word exceeding means something that is great. You know, something that goes far beyond what we expect. You know, it says exceeding great and 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 uh, promises. That's what that's what Satan doesn't want us to see right now. The, his promise, the, the Lord is getting ready to some things that he's promised us. And Satan doesn't want us to see that. But the word exceeding means something that is very great, something that is extreme. So the Lord's. Um, so the Lord's pro precious promises are exceedingly great, very powerful. That's why Satan doesn't want us to receive it, because the things that God has given us is exceedingly great. It's beyond what we can comprehend, okay? But in verse three, it says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So basically, when we make it to the point where we're getting ready to receive, which means what's getting ready to manifest through us because everything that he's going to do for us is all for his glory. It's all for him to be glorified. That's why Christ said that anything you ask of me according to my will, I will do it so that the father will be glorified in heaven. So everything that he gives us, whether it be marriage, whether it be business, whether it be a ministry, everything that he's going to do for us is designed to glorify him. So it says his, his divine power has given, says given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. So once we submit unto him, we begin to understand the things that that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge, because it comes from the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So when things begin to manifest through us for him, for, for him to be glorified, it's going to bring glory and virtue, you know, in, 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 in front of the sight of men, precious promises, these things, it says, where, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So that's that was what, what else the Lord was showing me. You know, when he said, when I allow the enemy to fight you, it's designed for you to run to me because the more we come to the Lord, the more we inhabit his divine nature. See what I'm saying? The more we submit, the enemy is fighting us. That means that's the Lord's way of getting us to submit to him. And by us submitting to him, that uh, refines us. Like, you know, when he said in Malachi 3 and 3, that he's like a refining fire. So his fire refines us every time we run to him. 
so we can escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then in verse five, it says, and besides this, giving all diligence, that means that the, the scripture says that he is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. So we have to be, when we run to the Lord, we're being diligent. He says, and besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity. And says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So all of these things are going to make us fruitful in him. When it says uh, that you shall, that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that unfruitful goes with the corruption of the world through lust, because all of that is unfruitfulness. So it's just, all of this is designed to build us up in him so that when he start giving us these precious promises, as it says, we'll be able to handle it and it'll be able to glorify him. Basically, thank you, Lord. So yeah, it's going to be able, we'll, he'll be able to, we'll be able to be, he'll be able to be glorified. And um, Ephesians chapter one, verse 19, I've been, like Ephesians, I'm telling you, man, Lord just been having me in Ephesians for a while lately. Ephesians chapter one, verse 19. Okay. And it says, um, it says, and what is the exceeding? Here go the word exceeding again. And what is is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the mighty, according to the working of his mighty power. So there you go again with the word exceeding greatness. But if, if we can just go to verse 15 of Ephesians 1, it says, Wherefore I also have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love unto all saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So that goes again with Second Peter about the knowledge. See, the more we... The more the enemy fights us and the more we run to the Lord, the more the more hidden knowledge and the more hidden wisdom he gives us. That's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 7, he says that we speak wisdom in a mystery. So by us continuously submitting ourselves to the Lord, he's given us hidden wisdom hidden knowledge. He's given to given un, he's giving us what was hidden in him for our purpose, for our purpose in him. Okay. It says verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and sat him at the at, at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. But in verse 18, it says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints. So once we keep submitting, the eyes of our understanding begins to illuminate begins to be enlightened that you may know what is the hope. So that means that it gives us hope. Okay. So yeah, hope, hope that maketh not ashamed for the love of the Lord is shed abroad in our hearts. So, um, yes. So let me see what else I was reading. I was reading some other scriptures. Yeah. Ephesians two. Ephesians 2 is good too. That talks about his exceeding 
greatness. Um, verse 7. Yeah, Ephesians 2 and 7, it said that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So in the ages, that means that he's, he's just revealing everything to us. Everything that was hidden in him is being revealed in this last time. Uh, what else I was reading? Ephesians. Three and twenty. Yeah, we all we all know this scripture. Ephesians three and twenty. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding, they go exceeding again, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. See that? So the power that he gave us has to be stirred up. And the only way it's going to be stirred up is by us going through trials, testing trials. It's to build up our faith. It says, according to the power that worketh in us. That means every time we go to him, that power is being stirred up, is being stirred up, is being stirred up. That's working in us so it can manifest through us. That's why. In 2 Corinthians 4, when Paul talks about how the power of Christ has to be manifested through our mortal flesh, you know, that everywhere we go, people going to see it. Just like when Christ was walking and those demons and those people saw Christ and they said, have you come to torment us before our time? I mean, Christ wasn't doing nothing. All he was doing was just walking somewhere. And those demons, they saw the power in him. They saw the power manifested through him. So it's like, so it's like wherever we go, when we walk into a store, everywhere we go, people, they're going to see that power working in us because of those tests and trials is working is working it in and out of us. It's going to manifest that his glory is going to be manifested through us. Yeah. Let's see what else. Uh, uh, first, first Thessalonians three and 10. I think I need to go to this here to read first Thessalonians so I can get more of an understanding on that. Three and 10. I may get more insight if I go here. It says, yeah, 1 Thessalonians 3 and 10. It says, night and day, praying exceedingly. Woo, man, you see this, y'all? <laughs> night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. So this is a question Paul is asking here. Um, I'm gonna go to verse seven. It says, "Therefore, brother, we are confronted, we are comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live, if you stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy with we joy for our sakes before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly." So. We have to pray exceedingly. Every time the enemy fights or every time we get discouraged, we have to pray exceedingly. It says day, it says night and day. That means all day, all day. Like right now, we got to pray like all day. Like if you had work and, the, and, some, and something is going through your mind or you're being discouraged, pray, 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 pray. So that things could be manifested. So yeah, we gotta we gotta keep praying, y'all. I remember when we was growing up at church, we had testimony service. We I don't know if churches have testimony service no more. But the other day the spirit was showing me that a lot of a lot of things that's happening right now is because people don't pray the way they used to pray. Man, I'm telling you, I used to hear the saints pray. You know, I used to hear testimonies about how. They can feel, I, I believe it was one time something was going on with somebody's daughter. And this this sister said that she got on her knees and started praying for her child, that her child wouldn't do something. I don't know, I don't remember what it was. 
But she said she got on her knees and started praying. And she said whatever her daughter was going to do, she ain't, she didn't do it. And you don't hear that type of stuff no more. But we, we got to keep praying, y'all. We got to go back to prayer. Seriously. Um, I want to go to that scripture where it talks about our light affliction. Now that, I'm telling you, that's one of my favorite scriptures right there, too. For our light affliction. Let me see. That's 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. It says, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding, they go exceeding again, an eternal weight of glory. That means that right now the Lord is trying to give us some weight in our spirits. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, you know how when somebody is going through something and somebody is say, oh, man, I, I got you. I'm going to hold you down. Yeah, that that glory of the Lord is going to hold us down. Like what I mean, hold us down. I mean, I'm, I'm saying it's going to it's going to give us some strength to deal with what we're dealing with until the Lord manifests. So exceeding an eternal weight of glory, man, that's powerful. But in Romans 8 and 18, Paul says here, he says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So for us that's going, for us that is called to, to be afflicted, to go through things, when the Lord begins to start using us to minister to people, that glory and that power and that fire that's going to come out of us, it's not going to be compared to what we was going through. And even with the people that we're ministering to, they they going to be forgetting about what they're going through. They're going to be like, man, this, this is powerful. I mean, it's, the, the, this glory that's going to be coming through us, it's not, it's, it's not going to be compared. It's nothing could compare to it. It's, it says, for the suffering, for, the, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. So this stuff that we're going through right now, <laughs> It's not worthy to be compared. Like, listen to what he's saying here. Like, I'm actually noticing what he's saying here myself. He said these sufferings in this present time, he said it's not even worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And who is that glory? Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. That's why when Paul said, for if they have known, they said they wouldn't have never crucified the Lord of glory. That glory that's going to be revealed in us is Jesus Christ, man, himself. Ooh, and uh, let's go to verse 19. This is my favorite too. Then when that happens, it says in Romans 8 and 19, it says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. That means that the whole earth, the, the, the water, the grass, the dirt, the mountains, the animals, especially some people in other nations are there waiting and expecting for the sons of God to come forth. It says the manifestation of the sons of God. So that means when the Lord gets through refining us and 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 stripping us and and you know cleansing us, it's gonna it, man. It's, that that's that remnant, y'all. Let's go to um, let's go to Zephaniah three and thirteen. Like for people that's hidden in the Lord right now. This scripture here is very encouraging. This is Zephaniah, not Zechariah, but Zephaniah 3 and 13. It says the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies. 
Neither shall deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So the remnant, if you believe the Lord is, is all of this stuff that we say the Lord is doing to us right now, the, we're going to come forth. Like you got a lot of people that lie in ministry. You got a lot of people that got a deceitful tongue. You got a lot of people that's afraid of Satan. But when the remnant come forth, they're not going to do no iniquity. Now they're going to speak lies. They're not going to have a deceitful tongue. You're not going to hear nothing about them on the news. You're not going to hear all this stuff you're hearing about people that lie. When the remnant of the Lord come forth, it's going to be glory. I'm telling you, that's why Christ said, he said that the end will come when the gospel of the kingdom is preached. He said, he said, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached, he said, then the end will come. So when things begin to be manifested through us and Satan begins to see things being manifested in the earth, then that's when the end will come. So, yeah, I, I like that scripture. Um, oh, I guess I have to go back to the basics here. We got to go to Acts 1. Yeah, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And it talks about receiving his power. Acts 1 and 8. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you, you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the other most parts of the earth. So that's the part where he's talking about um, us preaching to the nations. Then the end will come. That's the whole purpose of why we have to have his power, his effectual power. Uh, in Luke 24 and 49, he says, uh, he says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but cherry ye in Jerusalem, and you shall be endowed with power from on high. So what happened in Acts chapter two, that's getting ready to happen again. It's getting ready to be an outpouring of his spirit. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. There's a lot of spirits running around here. He said, but I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So that is getting ready to be an outpouring, brothers and sisters. It's getting ready to be an outpouring of his spirit. So, yeah, that's basically what I was in, when, in my spirit to say. Oh, OK. First Peter four and 13. Yeah, this is a good one, too. Forgot about this one. First Peter four and 13. It says, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be also what? With exceeding joy. <laughs> they go that exceeding again. That exceeding man is great. Wow. So right now we have to rejoice. He said, but rejoice in as much you are partakers. We are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So that's that word exceeding, exceeding joy. So that means that he's going to give us joy in being partakers of, of Christ's sufferings. Yeah, thank you, Lord. What else? It's a lot of scriptures. Oh, yeah. That's what I was talking about in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 4 and 10. It says... Um, 
Oh, let's start at verse seven. This is everybody. This is everybody's favorite scripture. It says, but we have this treasure in, her, in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So that's what he's trying to do, right? He's trying to get our flesh out the way. It says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Here's the key. He says, always bearing about in the body and the body, the dying of our Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. See. So and then he says, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Christ's sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So that's what he's trying to do. But in verse 16, it says, for which we faint not, but but though our outward man perish, the flesh, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And then that's when it goes into that light affliction, what he's talking about. So in this verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, which means the spirit of the Lord is moving. He's moving. We just have to continue to travail in the spirit so we can see that what he's doing in the spirit can be manifested. But the spirit of the Lord is moving. I'm, I'm encouraging y'all, but I'm also encouraging myself. The spirit of the Lord is moving. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So we have to concentrate on what's not seen. And we do that by staying in the spirit. Staying in the spirit of the Lord. So. Yeah. But in verse four, this is very important. It says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So the remnant, remember we was talking about the remnant in Zeph Zephaniah 3 and 13. The remnant was saying is they're not going to be have a deceitful tongue. They're not going to lie. They're not going to be afraid of Satan. But in verse five, it says, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord and ourselves, your service for Jesus's sake, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, which is Christ, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the remnant is not going to preach about themselves. They're going to preach Christ and him crucified. And then that's when things is going to begin to be illuminated in his glory in the earth through us. So I hope that encouraged y'all because the show encouraged me tonight. So um, I guess that's all I wanted to talk about. But I'm going to tell you this one scripture that's been really on my heart. I posted about it on Facebook today. A lot of things are being exposed to brothers and sisters, you know, um, as the remnant of the Lord is being hidden. The Lord is exposing a lot of things and Ezekiel 45 and nine has really been in my spirit for the last three, four weeks. And it's, it's a scripture that you're not going to hear a lot about. But Ezekiel 45 and 9, it says, Thus said the Lord God, let it suffice you, O princes of Israel. It's talking about the leaders of our people. It says, remove violence and spoil. And I had to I had to really look at that part because I'm like, okay. Like, he said, Thus said the Lord, let it suffice you, O princes of Israel. So that's talking about the leadership. He said, remove violence and spoil. So that means that if, the, if these are our leaders, then they should be removing violence and spoil. And execute judgment and justice, which means our leaders are supposed to take up for us. 
And then he said, take away your exactions from my people. That's talking about money. So that means people, our leaders to stop asking us for money. <laughs> okay, you know all them people. I, I need 20 people to give a $1,000 seed. The Lord is saying, stop that. The Lord is exposing that. He said, take away your exactions from my people, saith the Lord God. So basically... The princes of our people have to stop doing a whole, lot of, a whole lot of wicked stuff before they can remove violence and spoil and before they can execute judgment and justice for the people, basically. So this is why the Lord got the remnant hidden. Because the remnant is praying. Seriously. And when look at verse 8, this is Ezekiel 45. He says, in the land shall be his possession in Israel, and my princes shall no more oppress my people. See? And the rest, he said, my princes, that means these princes are oppressing their own people. And the rest of the land shall they give to the house of Israel according to their tribes. See? See? So that means the Lord is getting ready to flip some stuff. See what I'm saying? He getting ready to bring forth his remnant. He going to move all these liars out of the way. I don't know how he going to move them out the way. But he's going to move people that lie out of the way. Let me tell y'all something. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 9 and 15. He said that a poor man will deliver a city and no one will remember. People think, and I'm going to have to probably mention this again in another video when I talk about this Ezekiel again. I just feel led to talk about it. People think that it's a lot of people that give people money that lie. <laughs> Seriously. Not saying that people should give people money that tell the truth, but I'm just saying that's what's going on in the world right now. You know, so. But yeah, enough of that. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you on the night for what you're doing. We thank you for speaking your word from your heavenly realm. Everything that was said tonight, let it penetrate our hearts, spirits, souls, and minds. Bless our families, our children. Cover us with your blood, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, cover us with your, your cleansing blood power, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke, we destroy, we dismantle every demonic spirit. We command them to go back to the pits of hell. We stop the assignment of the enemy, but we proclaim victory in the glory and the light and the power and the anointing of Jesus Christ. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just ask you, we just, we just thank you for your outpouring of your spirit from city to city, from neighborhood to neighborhood, and every police station, and every school, every block, every corner, every marriage, every household, every family. We proclaim deliverance. We, we proclaim wholeness in your glory and in your spirit. And we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, I'm signing off. I'll see y'all later. Oh, th uh, thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. I, all praises. Thank you, Jesus, man. God is good, man. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good night.